this is Morganarchy and today we're going back to the 1990s with the official Sonic the Hedgehog yearbook and I believe it's from 1992 originally cost £4.95 and we've got some nice screenshots inside Sonic 2 that's all Sonic 2 I believe yeah we've got Aquatic Ruin, Metropolis, Metropolis is blue there so this could be a beta version because in the final version Metropolis Zone is green a date would be nice please 1992 there we go well 91 92 so it was in between sonic 1 and sonic 2 i think that's a screenshot from sonic 2 as well so we've got a comic those of you who didn't know as well as being in games in the 90s sonic was also a comic by archie comics quite a long comic and there's dr robotnik trying to catch sonic with some glue because that'll work. The Sonic interview. What is the secret of Sonic's success? How does Sonic feel about things? Why does he like burgers and fries? So this must have been before he started liking chili dogs. <laughs> Robotnik spent a lot of time trying to capture or destroy me. Sonic the Balloon. It's a great tribute to the superhero of Morbius that a giant hot air balloon has been shaped to look like him. This photo was taken at the 1993 Sega European Motor Racing Grand Prix. So Sega used to do uh, motor racing, but that's how big it is. Look how big it is compared to the car and the people. It's huge. Sonic Game Shots. Are you a cool dude like Sonic the Hedgehog? You'll be real cool if you can identify from which Sega games these pictures are taken. Uh, well, questions one and two, all we want is the name of the dolphin, uh, Echo. <laughs> okay, that's Kid Chameleon. That's some boxing game, no clue. Uh, that's Taz, clearly. That's Sonic 1. That's another Taz game. And another comic. Speed Demons with a Z for some reason because it was the 90s. Why not? Oh, look, he's in Spring Yard Zone. Oh, I just saw Michael Jackson. <laughs> Sonic Stars. When you're a superstar, such as Sonic the Hedgehog, it's a natural thing you should meet other superstars. Take a look at the selection of photographs on these two pages and test your celebrity spotting powers. Well, I'm not going to be very good at this. <laughs> I don't know who any of these people are. Well, actually, that's Gary Lineker. I know that is. <laughs> Gary Lineker with a Sonic t-shirt and a Game Gear. Ah, 90s. I don't know who any of these people are. Is that Boy George? Uh, no clue. Some cricket player? Some guys with Game Gears? And Mickey J there, of course. Some very excited guys, very happy with their game gears there. Exclusive competition for readers. Win a mega CD. Okay, so you've got to name these enemies. Now if you have Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive, with the manual, you'll know what these are called. That's a Caterkiller. That's a Buzz Bomber. I'm not sure what these are. But I'm sure it'll say somewhere in the manual. But I think the competition ended about 20 years ago. So I can't win a Mega CD. We've got a Shinobi comic. Oh, this is supposed to be a Sonic book, not a Shinobi book. Not that there was anything wrong with Shinobi. It was quite a good game. We've got a review of Sonic the Hedgehog. So was this after Sonic 2 come out or just before it come out? Oh, we've got some more reviews. Sherlock Holmes. The Flintstones, Sega News, the new six button arcade power stick, Mega Drive design changes, ah oh, that must be when they brought out the Mega Drive 2, which is the one I had, now I have a Mega Drive 1, and another comic. <laughs> Sonic is eating uh, chocolate and drinking cola, yet he's still very fit and active. Sonic always eats a load of crap doesn't he, he's always eating burgers and chili dogs. And this is the boss from Sonic 1, the first level of Sonic 1. So that's that, the Sonic the Hedgehog official yearbook from 1992. Bloody 90s, eh?
Next, we've got another Sonic book, Sonic the Hedgehog in the Fourth Dimension by Martin Adams. Now, sources tell me Martin Adams is a pen name, but he's written a few of these Sonic novels, shall we say. I don't think this is the first one. I think this is the second one in the series. Perhaps it'll tell me. Oh, and apparently it was owned by Thomas Williams of Class 6BJ in St. Peter's uh, Church of England Middle School. And he's drew a little face. Cheers, mate got this from a charity shop <laughs> yeah already published sonic the hedgehog in robotnik's laboratory so this must be the second one coming up sonic the hedgehog and the silicon warriors sonic the hedgehog in castle robotnik is it wrong that i want to buy them <laughs> first published in 1993 there's no well there's a couple of pictures in it but what i think's really cool if you look in the top corner of this if you skip through the book really quick It's a flip book. Because why not? Do that again. Let's do it a little bit quicker this time. Lovely. Check out the second in a brand new series featuring the world's most popular hedgehog. Now I'd like to read a little bit of this to you if I may. I'm going to read you the prologue. Sonic the Hedgehog in the Fourth Dimension by Martin Adams Read by Mog Anarchy The Sonic story so far There was a time when Morbius was a peaceful world and the Green Hill Zone was the most peaceful and pleasant and generally all-round cool place to hang out on the entire planet. Morbius' inhabitants were and are talking animals of all types. The hippest, streetwise dude of all was and is a hedgehog named Sonic. And of course, it just had to be Sonic who stumbled into the laboratory of Morbius' only human, the kindly but absent-minded Dr. Kinnatabar. Dr. K was perfecting a device, the retro-orbital chaos compressor, to attract all the evil on Morbius and contain it within six emeralds he called the Chaos Emeralds. Neat name, Doc. He found the time to help boost Sonic's already radically fast footwork too, and with the help of a special pair of drop-dead cool red trainers, Sonic exceeded the speed of sound. And he turned blue, of course. Sonic super-speeded all over Morbius, searching for the grey emerald that would neutralise the evil contained in the Chaos Emeralds. But before he found it, Dr. Kinterbar's absent-mindedness brought disaster to the whole planet as he entered faulty data into the ROCC. The device exploded, releasing the emeralds, scattering protective golden rings across the length and breadth of Morbius, and transmogrifying Kinnatabar into his exact opposite, the evil, power-crazed, obese and egg-loving Dr. Robotnik. Robotnik's influence reached across the entire planet. Once verdant landscapes were transformed into polluted wastelands, the evil doctor's robots scoured the land for animals to imprison, and in particular, for the one super-fast hedgehog who has the power to foil his plans, Sonic. And Sonic has filed Robotnik's plans at least twice by the time you read this book. But Robotnik is inexhaustibly, exasperatingly resilient. Once again, he's back. And that means trouble for Morbius in general. And for hedgehogs with red trainers in particular. <laughs>